Good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live. Uh, my name's Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. I'm one of the Omni Bros joined by a other Omni Bro. That would be the Omnibus Collector. How's it going, Omni? Plus, uh, it Omnibus. Um, it's good. Omnibus. I was already complaining to you about not having a chair to sit on right now, but what is? It? Are you on the floor? Yeah. I. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Yeah, I decided to just sit on the floor because I, I was going to sit with the computer in my lap and then I realized like this is not the most conducive position for my neck. I can't even sit on the floor. I'm sitting all like cross-legged. I've got pillows behind me to kind of give support, but so. Huh. I can't. I, I was on the floor with my dog the other day and it took me 12 moves in three minutes to get up from the floor. <laughs> it's like people who don't know how to parallel park. And then <laughs> that's they what, yeah, that's like a, a like 17 <laughs> point turn to get into a yeah, spot. That's about what I finally got up and I'm like, oh, holy smoke. But uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by InStockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. At the end of every month, IST is kind enough to give us a $50 credit or gift card to IST, and we give it away to a lucky viewer out there that is watching. And Joey Goose won last month, so congratulations to him. $50 or more in an order will help you get free shipping in the United States. That was a big deal this week. There was a lot of Omnis that came out this week. So free shipping was a big deal. And fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. I tried to emulate your jingle whenever Gio and I did the show. Oh, uh, that's what he, that's what he uh, said. I meant to go back and watch that. Uh, I guess towards the beginning, because we almost forgot to do it. And I was like, oh, we got to do the thing. And I, I like ra rattled it off real quick and then ended it with the instocktrades.com. <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, actually, you know, uh, when we were, as Gabe calls it, when we were in the green room, the pre-show, I noticed you had a super big collection of Buffy and I think Angel, too. I didn't know you were a big Buffy verse. Guy. Oh, yeah, I'm a, a Buffy buff. Yeah. Okay, so, there they are. That's like worth a car or something at this point. Is that right? Yeah, those don't stay in print long, do they? I, well, because they've gone to, I mean, as you can see, you probably can't see from here, but uh, these are from Boom. So it switched. The, the license went to Boom uh, a couple years ago. From Dark Horse? Yeah, so Dark Horse had had Buffy forever. They they were publishing Buffy comics before the season eight stuff, like stuff that was set around the time of the actual show. And um, I'm trying to get a good angle here, but I don't have a table or a chair. I'm just like holding the computer now. That's okay. Um, but yeah, they they switched over to Boom, and Boom has a new ongoing series that started up recently. So Dark Horse had seasons eight through twelve. And there was a big um, kind of concern from Buffy fans that the last season, season 12, was not going to wind up getting a hardcover edition. And what's up, dude? Hey, dude. Just, just asking me about my Buffies. Um, but Ooh. they did wind up doing season 11 and 12 from Boom. And then down here, there's season 11 of Angel. However, there is no season 10 library editions of Angel uh, of those comics from Dark Horse. So there's still like a chunk of material that's missing from that. What's up, Gio? Hey, Gio. Hi, hey, Gio. Hi, everybody. But that's that's my Buffies. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, I used to, I watched the show. I've watched the entire series. Um, loved the show. A lot of great characters in there and i started buying those hardcovers um not long after the eighth season had come out and this was before i got married so probably about a decade ago and 
that like I really love the season eight comics. Like if you enjoy the the type of writing that Whedon does in the show, um, very good at like the banter and stuff. The characters really come through, in my opinion, in that series in the comics, um, in a really positive way. And I, I really enjoyed the way that they were. I haven't read all of the rest of the stuff uh, after that, but that season eight stuff was just fantastic. And I think now Boom is just printing them in. Uh, paperbacks so we don't have library wow. editions uh, at least not yet lucky angel season 11 boom library editions pissed mm. a lot of people off because there was no covers or breaks between issues says hayden mcgee and that sounds ridiculous i think i remember hearing about this it's like uh talking to omnicat about that image and the way that they did uh the walking dead you know, all the collected editions, The Walking Dead doesn't have cover breaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you read straight through it like it's one continuous. Like, I remember reading the first uh, collection, and I was like, damn, this is the longest first issue I ever read. <laughs> uh, I find that uh, highly annoying. And I try and stay positive about everything, but I'd like a break between my issues. Am I uh, right? I want to know where to put my bookmark. Like, I want to know where, where I'm stopping. Like, I... If I'm reading while I'm using the lavatory, I like to have a stopping point. You know, that's just me, though. Now, uh, these books, do they continue the, ser the series or what are they? Is it a whole new thing? How does the, it work? The Buffy books? Mm -hmm. Those, the ones that uh, Dark Horse and then Boom did in those library editions, those are directly continuing the story from the series. So it continues mm -hmm. from the hook at the end of, of the original Buffy series. Oh, cool. um, so you do get to pick up with what was happening there and then move along. But Boom has since restarted with a new issue one, new series. And I read the first few issues, um, but just didn't get into it nearly as much as I did with the Dark Horse stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely like probably two years behind on that or something. And I'm not sure if I'm going to go back to it at this point. I would love to someday watch that show. But it's like 20th on my list and we know Dude. how good I am at following up on my list of doing things that people recommend. One of which was watching judge, not judge dread. I watched <laughs> dread Monday night, uh, right after the show. Like I said, I would, and <clears throat> that is extremely, uh, impulsive for me. That is way outside the box. Uh, um, that's that's not uh, usually I am very uh, rigid in my thinking. So that that's like that's twenty twenty one, Jess. That is that's Earth two, Jess. There you go. <laughs> that's what, so that's, what made you break away from the norm and decide on Monday, like I'm finally going to watch this movie that literally everyone has been telling me, <laughs> basically since we started this show, that I needed to watch. <laughs> that's and, true. And Earth 2 Jess is way cooler than Earth 2 Rise of <laughs> Russian bot, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, what made me do it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I had, I had energy, and people had been, uh, you know, it had just built up where people just kept talking about it, and uh, I had just got done reading a dread book, so I was in the mood. Even if I get in bed at 10, I don't fall asleep until like 1230. So I thought, screw it. I'll just watch it now. And I was really pleased with it. It was really good. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know what to expect, but I loved it. I loved how Judge Anderson especially was the wide-eyed rookie at the very beginning. And then her facial expression just changes by the end where she's practically a veteran cop after what they went through, or a veteran judge, rather, after what they went through. And the, the I mean, her face just changes. Uh, it, it was amazing. I, I thought it was great. And it's um, full of violence. It was, it was enough, it was just enough violence for me. I, yeah. uh, and blood and stuff, so. I don't know. I, Lou has always sent me clips of stuff to sort of test my uh, 
<laughs> ability to withstand. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this one was fine. I, I thought it wasn't um, it, it wasn't over the top, and and uh, Lena Headley was great uh, as the deep scar gang leader, and I, I everybody did really well in that. I loved. It, you know how he could call out incendiary and change his his weapon like he can in the comics. Um, how great is Carl, how great is Carl Urban as Dread? Yeah, because he has to play it. He can't play it. He can't play it monotone, but he still has to be non-emotional, mm -hmm. I guess, because he's Judge Dread. But he but he does a great job of being. Uh, yeah, he, he does a great job of being dread. Mm -hmm. He's so uh, he's so cool in that movie. Yeah, not, it's not uh, ever taking his helmet off. Part of part of the agreement to uh, get Carl Urban was he cannot take the helmet off in the movie. That was his his own thing. He said, "I'll do the movie." Yeah, take the helmet off throughout the whole film. I remember oh, how big of a deal that was. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Carl Urban w agreed. I will do the movie, but I'm not taking the helmet off throughout the whole movie. I remember before it came out, that was like the big thing was they, they kept advertising like it's not coming off. You're not going to see his face because mm -hmm. people were concerned that you have a, a, a well-known actor or, you know, not as well known as like Sylvester Stallone was whenever he did that. But you have a known actor who has a known face and they're like, is he going to be taking his helmet off? Are they going to want to advertise who they have under the helmet? And they're like, no, we assure you we're going to stay accurate in that aspect. You are not going to see his face. That was, and, those were the problems of the Raimi Spider-Man films and uh, the amazing Spider-Man films with Andrew Garfield was every 30 seconds, the guy's taking his mask off. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was, we're taking the mask off. Cause we have to advertise. We have this actor under the mask. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I've I've never read, I don't think I've ever read a single dread comic. So Same. how like how accurate and how how well done is that movie compared to all of the comics that you've been recently reading? Because I know you've been reading a lot of them. Yeah. yeah, I'm about I would guess I'm halfway three quarters of the way through my readathon. Um and uh it is it, it's been a um, it's a long, long series. I mean, it's been been written mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. so uh, there's a lot of material that I've had to cover, and I don't. Um, my original idea was going to be guide to the to Judge Dread or how to read Judge Dread, but I <laughs> there's so much material that I I may have to come up with a different idea. But I thought it, it was it was accurate. Um, in, uh, I thought it was interesting that Judge Anderson never had a helmet on unless she was on her motorcycle, and then he always had his helmet on. They did a great job at depicting um, the mega city uh, uh, blocks, just mm -hmm. 500 stories straight up of squalor everywhere from uh, like New York to Washington. Um, they did a good job compared to the comics of like, you're the judge, you decide right there, judge, jury, and executioner. If, if, you know, um, if you come upon that. So, mm -hmm. uh, and they, t <laughs> they totally, uh, they judge that, that panhandler right before, before the block completely shuts down. <laughs> and, um, you know, they just point to him and said, okay, ISO cube for two months or whatever it was. Uh, and then he gets squished by the <laughs> block closing. <laughs> um, so I, let's see, I found all of that uh, accurate. They, um, the depictions of, um, well, it's mostly it's in that big, huge, mega city apartment complex. So you don't get to see much of the, you don't get to see any of um, the dead earth or anything uh, or the wasteland or, uh, or the, or the, the cursed earth or whatever, uh, whatever they call it. But the interiors seemed exactly like how I depict them, how I would think of them in the comics. And, um, 
and the, the gangs seemed uh, really real, like from the comics. Uh, the dialogue seemed like it was pulled right from the comics. He did a, Carl Urban did a great job, as I said, of delivering his lines, not in a monotone, but um, in, an, in, an, in an unemotional way that shows that he has everything handled and figured out. And it's, you have to be, um, uh, you have to, you have to be the judge, jury, and executioner, the law above everything else. I, he never said I am the law, but that's <laughs> in the, the comics. I am the law. Um, so he did a really good job because she was, you could see the emotion on Judge Anderson's face a lot throughout the whole movie. And he did a really good job of, of just uh, keeping very composed no matter what the situation was. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was really accurate, which which made it really delightful to see. I can see mm -hmm. now why people wanted me to see it so much, um, especially now, since I'm in the middle of my dreadathon. Um, I I found it to be really accurate and super fun. It was just um, there was a lot of jaw for me anyway. There was a lot of jaw dropping action. Um, it wasn't um, and that wasn't like RoboCop. The clip you, <laughs> you sent me where this hand gets <laughs> shot off, but it but uh, it was. Um, uh, it was probably just the right amount of violence. And when they, when Lena Headley takes out all those Gatling guns or whatever, and just wipes out the entire floor trying to get those two, I thought that was an amazing moment, how that was choreographed. I, It was spectacular. Hey, I'm, so I've never read any Judge Dredd comics. Is there a through line as far as like a plot? Or is it just kind of small little story? Um, in I I didn't um, what I've been doing since I didn't I didn't start with the case files. What I because there's case files like one through thirty six or however many they're up oh to. God, I, I know, and they're they're pr fairly thick books. Here's I did get this one because just for fun um, because it's. Um, Garth Ennis. There's 36 of those? Uh, this is Case File 17, and Garth Ennis and John Wagner do uh, the stories. Um, oh, that's awesome. John Wagner is the creator. I, I haven't even picked it up yet. Um, I'm never reading Dread now. The <laughs> what? Why? There's 36 of those. Oh, see, that that's what you're going to like about my video, is that I'm going to get it down to what you should read Nice. Mm -hmm. to still get a flavor for it. Um, yeah, because I don't want to pick up 36 of these either. And the first the first story in here is by Garth Ennis. And then there's mm -hmm. one by Grant Morrison that I ordered that hasn't come in yet. But um, the art is really cool. Um, and the first few case files, I think a lot of them were black and white. And what I'm doing is I'm picking the major points that got oversized graphic novels, oversized hardcovers, mm. the major that are the major stories throughout his career. And I've gotten to the point where now there is a, a, a string because a lot of times um, it was just a standalone story. Mm -hmm. um, but the string, the arc I'm in now is there's um, there's Mega City, and then out in the wastelands is the Cursed Earth, where all the uh, mutants are. They call them muties because mm -hmm. of the radiation that uh, wiped everything out. Um, and there's extreme prejudice in Mega City against the muties, and so the arc is what happens when Judge Dredd himself tries to get equal rights for the muties coming into um, Mega City One. Um, and there's a changing of 
the chief judge and there's all kinds of back room intrigue with it. It gets a lot more complex than the earlier ones, although the earlier ones um, had had a lot of stuff going on, but but these ones have a lot of uh, um, a lot of political chicanery, sort of, with like a council of judges mm -hmm. uh, vying for power and um, uh, 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 um, corrupt judges. And uh, the string I'm in now is what happens when uh, Judge Dredd tries to get equal rights for muties and uh, all hell breaks loose because of it and Judge Dredd starts to doubt himself hmm. and what he's um, what he's brought upon Mega City and it's going to go on I think I have another couple um, oversized hardcovers to go till I get to the end of uh, that series and okay. then it moves into a different story arc. Cool. That's really cool. Have you gotten into like the judge death stuff? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a judge. I got a book about judge death. Of, I'm sorry. I can't remember who sent it to me, but a, a viewer sent it to me. And it's really cool. It's a big, uh, oversized, beautiful hardcover with fantastic art. Um, Brian Boland did a bunch of the art in the beginning. Oh. Of so a lot of it is really good Brian Boland art. Um, and so it's a, it's a story of just about judge death. And then there's three other judges with him, and it's like war and pestilence and famine. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's hard to, um, they're from another dimension where they're, everybody's guilty. And so they, they show up and just start killing everybody. Mm. Everybody's guilty. And cool. So, ju and Judge Dread, I mean, Judge Death is, I, they're, they're hard to capture and kill. And a lot of times, the only thing they can do is get them banished back to their dimension. Mm. Uh, but um, the, uh, Oh, actually, this, the, I, I forgot about this. The, the series that I'm in right now with the, with the corrupt muties, I don't want to spoil it for, for anybody, but the mayor of, of Mega City One um, has a special secret that uh, I've been reading about, and it plays a big part in Judge Dredd's life. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's sort of the extra story arc that's in there that's really, really good um as um alongside with the um i don't know the political controversy of getting the muties equal rights and stuff so that's the string i'm following now cool yeah um the um the art has all it seems like they always pull like the best artists they possibly can like uh i don't know i just randomly there's every it's where like simon beasley and um uh steve dillon and i think carlos Esquera was one of the ones that created J judge dread with john mm -hmm. wagner but the art has always been a plus in everything I've read, even though it goes to different styles, it's always been really good. That it's always been high quality. Um, so that's um, and some some of the stories are quick to read, and some of them can take you a while to read. It depends on what the topic is. Um, somebody's complimenting us on the Black Parade t-shirt theme. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, cool. Well, yeah. unfortunately, so, there's not a sequel for the movie coming out for you to enjoy, but the last news that we got was about four years ago, they announced a uh, a show that would spin yeah. out with, with uh, Carl Urban involved. But that that dude's doing the boys right now. He's yeah. 
He's not doing anything else. He's oh, doing- yeah. That's another show I need to see. Oh, my God. The Boys is so good. That's a good one. It is yeah. a good one. Dredd has been one of those characters that has always fascinated me. And I'm like, oh, he looks pretty cool. Um, but it's just intimidating. Because the amount of books that there are, the names of all the different books that there are, it, it's a little bit intimidating to try to jump in and pick up the well. Do I pick up this case file? Do I start here or do I start here? So it's a lot. Yeah, that that's why I sort of undertook it. I wanted to get it to the best stories that were available um, and contained uh, enough meat that you didn't need to read all the ca- – yeah, I, I agree – that's intimidating, and the the idea behind what's turning into it like a two year project is um, <laughs> just so yeah you can you can go to a list and just and just read a- along this list, and instead of thirty six books with twenty five stories in each book, you'll get the the highlights of each phase of his career just in a much more digestible way. Um, and some, but you know, there's some purists. They're the ones that started with Case Files One back when it first came out, and they're still reading it through. But I, I can't do that. I don't. I that's just too much. So the idea was, I, I just wanted to, uh, yeah, make it not as intimidating. But there's mm-hmm. still a lot of stuff to cover. It sounds like it, it wears its political. Uh political intrigue right on its sleeve. It doesn't try to be subtle about it at all. Not at all. <laughs> no, there's one called, um, uh, let me think. I think it's, um, uh, I think it's the cursed earth and it's uncensored because it's judge dread and some other judges go out into the wasteland mm. and it's a parody. Well, the whole thing I think is a parody on American consumerism in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And now I think it's a parody on the American political system. But there was all kinds of images of Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's and stuff. And and they went through litigation. And so <laughs> the censored version, but you want to get the uncensored version that shows mm-hmm. Colonel Sanders and Ronald nice. McDonald and stuff like that. That's right. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it it's... um. It does wear its politics on its sleeve, as you exactly as you said. Mm-hmm. So, what's next on uh, the list of things that people have been telling you to watch since uh, forever? Oh, that list. <laughs> uh, just a sec. I don't even know what else we've been saying. I, that's the main one that I remember. It's a it's just constant. Uh, let's see. What are we doing this? Time? What we do in this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, wait. Let me write that down. I I forgot about that one. Uh, Damn, that didn't even make it on the list yet. <laughs> but, yeah, he's been telling me about that one forever, though. What we do? It's, uh, it's the funniest show on TV. Man. It's so good. Uh, what is it? Do back. Uh, sometime this year. They're, I think they started already on season three, or they're about to start with season three. Um. Let's see. The boys. Um, the voice has been talked about a lot. Um, and then Carol and Tuesday, and I got Space Dandy and Kids on the Slope that I showed Gio. Um, Haunting a Hill House, which I know I've got to see. Oh, that wasn't yep. me. <laughs> Watch season one, forget about season two. Oh, there's season two. No, 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 there's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those like, um, American Horror Story, where every season is a different story, so you it there doesn't have to be a season two. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's because there's not a season two. It's <laughs> terrible, and it was a blight on the first season. <laughs> uh, I only watched like half the first episode of season two. Yeah, it's absolutely terrible. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's a show that I'm supposed to see. Um, is it? Uh, it's kind of horrorish. Not Penny Farthing. What am I thinking of? Penny Dreadful? Penny Dreadful. Yeah. That's, I'm supposed to see that. Yeah, my ex loved that show. Like Dr. Sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. What else? I have so many, 
then I have all the other, uh, let's see, watching. I need to see Picard and Discovery, but those are more my own things. Did you uh, finish uh, Legion? I haven't yet. There you go. I need to finish Legion. I have to, um, Lou and I talked about <laughs> Planet of the Apes and Fast of the Furious. <laughs> That's been going on since 2017. <laughs> That's an ongoing saga. Yeah. <laughs> That's a saga longer than the Fast and the Furious movie. Yeah. You got to catch up on those before the, the new one comes out because you got to know why they're going to space. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there is a through line of a story, and it's mostly about family, Jess. Yeah. <laughs> I have heard that. Yeah, characters come in and out. Some characters you think are dead aren't dead. There's a secret brother involved. It's it's intriguing. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, 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 uh, let's see. The boys, Legion. Oh, Buffy was one I was supposed to start, but I don't know when. That, that's like you got to clear an entire year for that. Yeah. That's seven seasons of like 20 something episodes each, an hour long episode each. Right. Like it's it's a lot. I, I watched it like I was uh, I think when I was in college, I was able to binge through all of it because I, I had like a really easy schedule and I would just be at home all day. And so I just turned the TV on and like run through six episodes at a time. Yeah. I, so I think I got it through in like a month or something like that, which wasn't too bad. Uh, the collector right there with another one I haven't seen. The okay. Joker. You were jokered out, though. You want nothing to do with the character. Um, I am sort of, yeah. I am but sort of was... jokered out. Let me put that on the list. I am sort of <laughs> jokered out. Oh, I need to see. Uh, everybody wants me to see Parasite, which I still yep. haven't seen. Oh, my God. Parasite is brilliant. And I will see Parasite. Um, the Korean one. Oh, not the anime? Not the anime. Damn. But right. that's a good one, too. Yeah. No. I was gonna say Jess would probably love that anime. That actually, that would be a Jess anime. I feel like Parasite. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Parasite with a Y. Mm -hmm. Um, and what it's like what twenty four, twenty six, just a normal size season. Yeah, twenty four episodes. Good old body horror. Yeah, uh, straight out of Junji Ito madness. I, I think you'll you'll dig it. It's like <laughs> a available. A, a, a dude like a high schooler who all of a sudden has like a an alien that is in his hand it has inhabited his hand and so like he'll have like a mouth show up and like eyes and whatever Ooh. and uh it winds up going into this whole storyline of kind of like this invasion of these uh aliens like that who are trying to do something and he winds up being the first line of defense basically mm -hmm. to fight against them mm -hmm. Um, it's a very, I, I've only watched a little bit of the anime, but I've read the entire manga. Um, it's a classic series that, uh, I, what I did watch of the anime is very well animated. It's very pretty and it's very well put together. Um, so I, I think I own it, even though I haven't watched more than a couple of episodes. Um, and Lou and Geo, oh, anime, here's some anime. <laughs> Gurren Lagan, Code Geass. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce any of these. GLs, FLCL. Fully oh, Cooley? No, no, don't watch Fully Cooley. What's watch. that? Don't watch Fully Cooley. You can take that off your list. That's that's my favorite one. Oh, that's, are you the one who gave that to me? I probably did. <laughs> I'm the only person crazy enough to recommend it to everyone. Listen to me. Listen to me, Jess. Don't watch Fully Cooley. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Space Dandy and Kids on the Slope, which I just got. Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Oh, yeah. Oh, that there one. You. Yeah. You, that yeah. one is definitely That's one you would enjoy. That's okay. okay. Uh, in slash Spectre. That was me. Okay. <laughs> Helsing. <laughs> That's that all of us. That was all of us. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, while we're on the topic... Um, which helps me? Wait, 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 because there's two cuts. There's the original. Uh, okay, not, not the original. There's the then they did like the uh, the, the ultimate. The ultimate is what he wants to watch. Yeah. The yeah. Ultimate. Okay. Wait. That's on Hulu. So you, you're Hulu. Good. Okay. Ultimate. The original um, one is kind of dookie, but we we should probably uh, talk about what what we're doing next uh, next Thursday. Oh. Uh, okay. Go what ahead. What are you doing next Thursday? 
So uh, next Thursday is Manga Week, and Gio and I have finally gotten Jess to agree to guest feature on the show uh, <laughs> as we're doing something that I think people, viewers, have mentioned they'd like us to do again, which is the old uh, real manga, fake manga game. And I've thought of a way to organize it into like more of an actual, like, like it's a game show or something. So uh, Gio and I are each going to come up with a list of real and fake titles and some real and fake descriptions for various uh, manga. And Jess is going to be uh, at the center here. And basically we will be telling him, you know, a title or he'll ask us like, you know, give me a title, give me a description and we'll give him one. And he gets to guess just as we did before, whether it is real or fake. If he guesses correctly, if he nails it, that it's a real or a fake series, then he gets one point. Uh, he has a chance to get up to 20 points like that. Uh, Cause we'll have 10 things each basically to keep it organized. And then Gio and I, if we win, if, if we, stump Jess with something, then we get two points for each. So everyone has a maximum amount of points uh, of 20. I don't know what the winner will get. Jess said the winner will get laid, but- hey, um, hey, that was for the chat only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well- I assume that you mean like a, a lay? Right. Like, oh, <laughs> right. right, right. Uh, maybe it could be, um, like if I win, Gio could send me those cookies from Puerto Rico, mm. um, and then you guys come up with what I could send you. If you win, I could send you something that you guys would like, equivalent to those cookies from Puerto Rico. We'll get something together. We'll figure it out. Yeah, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we're trying to advertise this a lot and get people to tune in next week. Uh, cause we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Um, I'm going to do my best to come up with some things to really stump you and whatever you believe or it's been super fun. I mean, it's been really fun. Oh yeah. The, it was hilarious when we did it before. And I, I think like given more, um, like I'm, when we were talking about it earlier, I was like getting super into the idea and, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, this is going to be good. I'm going to make this real good. I'm going to get some really awesome, like really convincing fakes. And I'm going to get some stuff that's real. That just sounds too ridiculous to be real. And we'll see where we go from that. <laughs> did, uh, did this do pretty well last time? I, I didn't get a chance to catch it last time. Gosh, I don't remember. I, I don't remember how many people were watching or anything, but we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. It's I, been feel like, I feel like Omar might've been on too. He may have. It's been a few years. We Probably. also need to do an episode again. Do the which one? A game show episode again? Oh, the trivia game? Oh, the trivia game. Yeah. Trivia yeah, game. Those are good. I can figure out I can figure out how to go questions now. I I researched it and I I, I think I found some sources for good trivia because mm -hmm. I bought a package of trivia cards and we have we've already blown through them. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like playing I think Did I send you a link game? for uh Trivia. What's that? Didn't I send Sorry. you a link for trivia? Or like I, questions or something? Uh, yeah, but I'm sure you should know. send it to me again. <laughs> All right, I'll look, I'll look it up. <laughs> Do you agree with Hunter C's comment, Jess? Just No, I've tried. Uh, I, it's a kind of... Uh, that part of is over, I think. I, mm -hmm. I've tried. If that... Time. But I'll look for the anime equivalent, and you can watch the anime if it's a good one. How about that? If I lose, yeah, uh, I watch the anime equivalent of a manga of whatever story Riley and I pick. We'll look if it has an anime adaptation, and you can watch it. Yeah. Okay, that sounds fine. It's, 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 it's just the same thing, basically, <laughs> just adapting it, animated. So, yeah. Just I still think if you if you could push through it, Jess, you would love Pluto. It's only nine volumes, and it's fantastic. I really think if, if you could just get through it, man, you would really dig it. It's great. They are doing an anime adaptation coming out soon. Of Pluto? Yeah. Really? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it doesn't have a date, but it's been in, in the works for a while. What's, what's the studio? 
no info on that. They just said there was an <laughs> anime adaptation in the works. That's it. That's all we know. Oh, my God. Well, whenever it happens, that's the way that Jess is going to take it in is through that. Yeah. yeah. I think it happened. What? Oh, are we talking about anime? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure where we were going. You heard take it in, and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> um, now, what that is up for. Were we um, were we talking about other comic book movies? Uh, yeah. we, we went in a lot with Dread, and I didn't know there was other movies that we wanted to talk about. Um, Tyler, Taylor Brown came up with this idea, and it was really good, um, about comic book movies with non-superheroes in them. Um, and some of the ones he came up with that we could talk about, um, I know I... I threw in Ghost World. I forgot to uh, type that one in, but Atomic Blonde, American Splendor, Sin City, nice. uh, Two Guns. I'm not familiar with that one. Snowpiercer, mm -hmm. Scott Pilgrim, Kingsman, 300, History of Violence, The Losers, Road to Perdition, V for Vendetta, and I think uh, earlier in the show, a lot of people... Um, uh, had a lot of uh, suggestions in the very beginning. Can um, I say the the worst comic book adaptation film of all time, though? Uh, in my very humble but loud opinion, is Dragon Ball Evolution. Ooh. Oh come on! <laughs> okay, you guys talk about that while I go get a little coke. Did either of you guys watch that movie? Yes. No. Yes. Unfortunately, I did. Wait, is it worse than Avatar? Yes, it is. Are there wow? Because <laughs> Avatar got the characters' names wrong, how they pronounce it. This movie just—I don't know. There, there's something like they tried to do a good job, but at the same time, it seems like something where they tried to just shit as much on it as they could. Mm. Which just doesn't make sense. It's it should have like if you're trying hard, it should come out a lot better than this. But there's just so many things that they get monumentally and completely backwards and wrong in this in this movie. Um, and I've successfully wiped a lot of it out of my mind as, outside of just like images and basic ideas of things that happen in there. But the thing that still stands with me and the, the comment that I make all the time is I watched it like while I was on the clock working at a movie theater back when it was out. And by the time the movie ended, I wanted my money back, even though I literally got paid to watch this movie. It was so just terrible. And like there's, and Gio, I think, isn't it like, not the climax, but like a big focus, a focal point in the movie is like, because Goku is basically a teenager and they give this entire like very typical high school party. And that's a large focal point is like Goku and and it's Bulma, right? Like Bulma is the main female character in this one. Uh, Bulma's in it, but he, he's after Chi Chi, but they're making it like it's a high school musical and he's a... Uh, uh, He's basically horny all the movie because he's going after Chi Chi, and uh, he gets in fight with bullies at school, and he has he shows up with his powers. Yeah, it's it's ter it's a terrible. It's, it's like um, they took like a like they were like let's do Dragon Ball, but the only thing that they knew for some reason was like Sam Raimi's Spider Man first movie. Yeah, and so they just like painted Dragon Ball characters on top of Spider Man, <laughs> and that's what we got. And I remember something like, isn't there a scene where he like flips over a scooter or something at the party? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the, the main villain being Piccolo, though just the worst looking Piccolo that you can imagine. Um, it's just terrible. It is, it is such a smack in the face because I, I remember like when I was a kid and I really wanted to see a live action Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. I thought that that would be the coolest idea ever was like, oh man, if they did a live, and I say a kid, I mean like, I was like 10 and in my in my 10 year old brain, I saw no reason that this would go wrong. Yeah. And when they finally like came around and said like, yes, this is a thing that's gonna happen. 
I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the best thing ever. And then I started like when they started showing all the things that were going to get involved. And then I'm like, this is the biggest mistake that I've ever seen. Um, but it is very literally the, the worst comic book adapted. And I know it's adapted from a manga, but still comic book adapted film that I think I've ever, ever had the uh, displeasure of seeing. Am I putting this look, up? Look at, look at all these pictures and how terrible. <laughs> <this is. coughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, so they try to give him the spiky hair no. in some way, but it just like comes off looking ridiculous. You put off some skinny jeans on that guy in flannel and he would get laid in downtown. Hey, there's literally a uh <laughs> avatar versus dragon ball on there. Like someone else and has already video thought game about this. Too. Oh my god. There's a Look video at, game for it. Look at Master Roshi though. Wow, I, he he tried with what he had, but yeah. Oh, and look, then uh, it. it's uh, Yamcha there too, right? That's yeah. There you go. There it is. So, Avatar: The Last Airbender is the one film that my brother, halfway through it, stood up, flicked the bird to the screen, said "fuck you," and walked out of the movie and waited for me in the lobby. He just wanted no part of it. <laughs> I remember that one being out as well when I was working and I didn't get the chance because it didn't line up with like when the movies were ending. Oh my God. <laughs> so I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but from the things that I saw, they're both offensively bad in relation to their original franchise. Yeah. But this is like, how is that supposed to be Piccolo? Is that really? Yeah. That's Yeah. I mean, yeah. the whole makeup doesn't look much better. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's there's a uh, there's a earlier Chinese adaptation huh. that is terrible, but also much better than this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What is that? What this? That no, the last thing. He's turning into the giant monkey. Wait here. That was... Yeah, and the, at the end of the movie, he turns into the monkey, into Ozaru. Really? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Is there a full movie? I don't remember. It was. I don't re like. Yeah, I've wiped successfully a lot of this out of my mind, like I was saying. But <laughs> so seeing these images, it's Yamcha, it's like. Why does Yamcha has has uh, uh, swag? <laughs> He's not supposed to have swag. Come on. Yeah, he's supposed to be a loser. That's his whole bit. Yeah. He's supposed to be always the first one, oh, second to Krillin, the, the one to die. Look at that vein right there. You got to pop. <laughs> <laughs> Yamcha's so lame, he wasn't even in the Tournament of Power, right? He wasn't in Tournament of Power, right? Right. I think they had a, a, a joke made out of it where they're like he he's expecting them to come ask him and he was like confused when they went and asked Frieza ahead of him yeah I would have too <laughs> you want to win this man yeah you know what uh, um, another anime adaptation that was terrible was uh, Death Note uh, Netflix oh uh, my god bad. I forgot about that one <laughs> yeah. I legitimately completely forgot that that exists so, I didn't watch any of it. How far away from the source material is it? It's the same problem they did. They had with Evolution, where they just tried to... I, I, I mean, I, going in, I, I remember making a video on my channel defending the idea of, like, what if the Death Note fell in America? And you have all the gun control issues and kids, angsty teens, I think it would be for a compelling retelling of Death Note from an American standpoint with different mm -hmm. characters. But instead, they just tried to do the same thing and bring L and his cringiness and OCD habits and all that stuff into live action, and it just comes off as kind of goofy. Uh, light, uh, American Light is very dumb where he's just swearing all the time and screaming and there's no intellect in this movie. Uh, uh, 
uh, what was the uh, Nisa was the character, the girlfriend? Mm -hmm. So they, she's pretty they, bad too. The only redeeming thing about that movie is uh, Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe as Ryuk. That's the only mm -hmm. thing that's worthwhile. It's just weird to me because don't they use everyone's original names from the manga as well? Yeah. Even though they're all American, it's like yes. <laughs> Misa and Light and whatever. And I'm like, uh, but yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. Like it could have, they could have done a good job in introducing the concept with an American cast and American characters instead mm -hmm. of taking not just the concept, but the entire story and just putting American actors into it that are terrible. So they completely got the character of light wrong, right? Because yeah. in the in the anime um, is basically a sociopathic serial killer. Like he, <laughs> that point, he is. He, he's just well, he, the main thing that they got wrong is that in the original he's, series, he's, he's calm and collected, and it takes a lot for him to actually break his veneer. And he's smart. Yeah, he's he's very you know, like you said, collected, but he's very smart and he he organizes his plans and stuff very well in doing what he's trying to do. But like Gio said, in the American version, the one that was on Netflix, he's just yelling all the time and he's dumb. He's just stupid. And it's like completely putting the wrong attributes on this character and making him entirely uninteresting. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's talk about how awesome Charlize Theron was in Blonde. <laughs> I still have not watched that movie. What's that? I still haven't watched that movie. Oh, it's so good. I love that movie. Love it. I can't tell you anything about it without ruining the surprises, but <laughs> she's so great in it. She just kicks ass majorly all the time, and there's all kinds of intrigue and just amazing backstory and stuff. Ah, oh, I love that movie. Will you she, just fill oh, in the blank and say she was great in blank and it would always be true? Oh, uh, yeah. She was great as Furiosa in Mad Max. Yeah. Um, has she done – I feel like she's done something since Atomic Blonde that was action-oriented. Am I old guard? Probably. Sorry? Old guard. Old Guard. Old oh, guard. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, also comic related. A non superhero movie. She was great in that. She is great. She was great in that. Yeah. Uh, Old Guard and, yeah, you, Atomic Blonde, you really need to see. It is so good. And Old Guard was great, too. That's, that's right. She's got uh, kind of a new career now as, as a, uh, as a kick ass physical violence actress now we're getting uh, a furiosa prequel and uh they're starting to work on it pretty soon and they've already cast uh who the young furiosa is gonna be you're gonna love oh. it Jeff. who is it elizabeth olsen no anya taylor joy uh who is that magic queen's gambit oh she's uh okay magic okay <laughs> Yeah, that um, after we see, let's see, we saw Soul last date night, and that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're watching a movie only the two of us want to see, and that's the Downton Abbey movie. We're watching that <laughs> tomorrow night, and then we're starting Queen's Gambit next Friday night. Nice, nice. Yeah. Did, uh, you, did you cry? In uh, in Soul, I I didn't cry. Wow. I loved it, though. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. I feel like I did cry some. <laughs> I do have Kleenex now. Yeah, I did cry. Yeah. Uh, I to know what part it was. To push you on another item on your list, though, Charlize Theron is also in the eighth Fast and the Furious movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is uh, true. And she's going to be in the ninth one as well. Mm -hmm. Where they go to space? Yeah, so um, obviously that means that you should watch those seven first movies to lead into the eighth one, which is your true goal, because you have to see her um, kicking all of the ass, and then you'll get to watch her in space as well. So she kicks major ass in the 
eighth one or seventh one? Uh, in the eighth one. But you can watch, uh, you, you get the opportunity to watch seven more movies before you watch that one. <laughs> I don't want to I mean, say you have to, but you get to. Now, which one is Gal Gadot in? Is she in two of them? Uh, I think, is what, she, like four or five? I think she's in four and five. Okay. Uh, what, was the, what was the one with like the 50 mile long plane runway strip? The plane was taking off and it took like 10 hours. I know what you're talking about, <laughs> but I don't remember. Oh, she's, uh, she's in a, yeah, she was in four and then in five and then in six. And <laughs> then uh, she had a deleted scene in seven. Mm. So, I mean, Jess, there's a lot of reasons for you to go watch the Fast and Furious movies. I'm just, like, tossing a couple of them out there. But, like, I mean, if you need me to, I can mail you a set. Hold up. I, like, I will take care of you, man. I got the eight-movie set. That's going to get you up to date. You can see the whole damn story and learn all about family and fast cars at the same time. And you got Gal Gadot. You got Charlize Theron. Even on the back, there's Charlize right there. You can barely Ooh. see her because it's a tiny picture, but she's got her blonde like dreads or whatever in there. And then right you got on. Jason yep. Statham. Oh, I like him. My when I was in high school, my friends all said that my dad looked like Jason Statham. He doesn't, but they all said that he did. So now that like every time a new Jason Statham movie comes out, I call my dad and I'm like, I saw your new movie. <laughs> <laughs> you also get the, you get the rock. Man, there's really nothing. Yeah, dude, there's the rock. Vin Diesel. There's nothing to hate in this series, really. It's just all gold. Except for the third movie. The first, third movie is terrible. But then, like, the third movie winds up being important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I have to watch it. Like, you, you wind up, like, if because I've, I've still ever seen the third movie. So I, like, understand everything that, uh, like, you, you don't have to have to watch it, but there's basically stuff is going to happen and you're going to be like, wait, what? Yeah. And cause that's what I did. And then I just mm -hmm. went on Googled it and I was like, Oh, okay. But it, it, it that was a uh, Tokyo drift. It was a, a major turn for the series uh, in that third film. Uh, just, I think like none of the characters came back in that one. It was a completely different plot. These are the Hispanic Avengers in my culture. These are <laughs> really okay. The yeah, uh, I think Nick P brings up a good point because I love this movie, Kick Ass. Right. That was a really, really good movie. Hey, Matthew Riley. Vaughn is just really good with directing superhero or comic book movies because he did Kick Ass, he did X Men First Class, and he also did the first Kingsman movie. I need to see that. I love the comic book. Kingsman is great. The first movie is great. The comic book. Um, Riley, what's the over under that we're gonna get a Moon Rover race in the next Fast and Furious movie? I didn't even think about it, dude. But <laughs> if that doesn't happen, like all I'm saying is that Fast Ten has to be a tie-in to the MCU mm -hmm. via Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And yeah. if it's not, like I'm gonna go find Justin Lin or whatever and like Smack him. Dude, I've, I've even got the perfect tagline for it. Fast and the Furious 9, the only thing stronger than gravity is family. <laughs> I got it. It'll be... You'll see. <laughs> 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 I broke <promise. laughs> It's going to be like the, the scene in uh, Hobbs and Shaw, the, the spinoff, by the way, Jess. There's a spinoff movie. Oh, that's right. I heard about where it. Where the rock like is trying to pull the the helicopter or whatever, except it's gonna be like the rock holding on to like Vin Diesel's hand mm -hmm. as like Vin Diesel is being pulled away by mm -hmm. like like a like a ship, like one of the little like return shuttles or whatever from the rocket ship. <laughs> and, and they're like, he's just muscle bulging. And he's like, I got you, fam. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't happen, like we're gonna have to make our own. Like I, 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 I couldn't like think for, or I couldn't speak for a second because I was like laughing at the image <laughs> of the Rock just like bicep just coming out of this world, yeah, pulling someone through space. Man, and when they go into the multiverse, that's gonna be the greatest thing ever.
<laughs> oh, I've got, I've got a whole pitch meeting and a crossover plan in my head for Bad Boys and Fast and Furious <laughs> called The Bad and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other great thing about the multiverse is that they're gonna this is how they can bring back paul walker yeah yeah that, very good well they've talked about bringing him back using his brother yeah because i think that's how they they finished off like the that last movie that he was in was yeah. using his brother they used uh, uh, his brother's body and then they yeah his, um his oh. image in the scene yeah it's a beautiful <laughs> tribute actually in the last film where it I, I cried. I will be honest with you. I cried. It was actually a very beautiful tribute. Oh yeah, the like that. Those movies will make you like care more about Paul Walker than you ever thought you could. <clears throat> and then like when you get to the last movie and you you're like spending all this time watching these movies and you kind of like I mean when I was binging through them because I had seen them in theaters and then we binged through them a few years ago like all of them. I was like, damn, I forgot he died. <laughs> and like, you see the last scenes and I'm like. <laughs> Uh, I like. I actually liked this movie. I didn't like the comic book, but I liked the movie with uh, Angelina Jolie. Wanted I would have been it. better if it was Charlie Theron, though. You well, that's true. Everything's better with Charlie Theron. But I liked Wanted the movie, One and then great. I read the comic book, and I didn't like it as much. Yeah, One is fun. It's a fun movie. Yeah. I was I was more into the comic than the movie because um, I watched the comic for or watched the comic. I read the comic first, and then when the movie came out, and I was expecting like any semblance of anything from the comic aside from like the very beginning, I was very let down because <laughs> they're like extremely different. Um, mm -hmm. So I was I was pretty harsh on that movie when it came out. Chris Pratt is in that movie. Oh yes, I don't remember in, that. Any in the office at the beginning? He's the guy that gets hit that gets hit with the keyboard. Yeah, He's the guy that's having sex with the, the main character's girl. That was always always funny to me. Also, that they had James McAvoy play the character in there when like the character in the comics is just like a stand-in for Eminem, basically. Mm -hmm. Such so completely different mm -hmm. uh, personality. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I watched uh, Scott Pilgrim again recently, twice actually, uh, about a week ago. Yeah, that's another one I still have to see. Oh, you still haven't seen Scott Pilgrim? Oh, wow. That's I you. Dude. Either. I have the books and I have the soundtrack, but I haven't seen the movie. The books are great. The movie is fantastic. It's, it's just such a great. Like everything about it just hits all those notes for different geek cultures because you have something that's very great as far as like a comic book adaptation that feels like a comic book adaptation, but also with all this humor that applies to people who are huge like video game nerds. Um, it, it's just an all around fun experience with all these little uh, Easter eggs and little notes and stuff that you can pull out. Like, so every time you watch it, you notice more things and that, that's not why I watched it twice recently. I watched it twice because for some reason my my nephew really got into Scott Pilgrim recently. And so he decided that he wanted to watch it when he was over. And so I put it on and then I gave him like I had a Scott Pilgrim shirt and stuff from the movie back when it came out that doesn't fit me anymore. So I gave him that. And then like my wife was watching it with us, but she missed the last like 30 minutes. So she was like, uh, or she missed parts of it. And so she's like, I, I kind of just want to watch the whole thing again. I was like, okay. So I watched it twice within the span of a, of a few days. Um, and it's definitely one of those movies for me that like I could watch it multiple times in succession and really not get tired of it. Um, Cause there's so much in there and you've got uh, so many different actors that wind up appearing in there that are also like present in other media and stuff. Like, uh, you have both Captain America and Captain Marvel playing major roles in there. You have Superman in there, as far as Brandon Routh goes. Um, God, who else do we have in there? It's just a just a who's who of different people in there. Um, but have you have you seen other Edgar Wright films like Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz or uh, Baby Driver? I saw Baby Driver. Oh, Baby Driver's so good. I love that. I've seen that three times. Yeah, Baby Driver is brilliant. I love the soundtrack. I love how yeah. they make music into the film. Baby Driver is just brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Definitely, if you enjoyed Baby Driver, definitely watch 
Scott Pilgrim. But another thing that I really love about Edgar Wright as a director is that there's not a ton of synergy between his films outside of like the the uh, Three Flavors trilogy. Cornetto trilogy. Yeah, those have like similar feels to them. But aside from that, his other movies, like you can barely tell it's by the same director, which yeah. is something I really appreciate because it shows just this very nice breadth of ability as a director. Um, so when you watch like Scott Pilgrim tonight after the show, Jess, because that's your <laughs> what you're going to do now before you go to bed, you're going to be like, damn, this is the same guy that did Baby Driver. And then you're going to watch Shaun of the Dead tomorrow. And you're going to be like, shit, this is the same guy that did those two movies. I, so I do want to see Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. I've heard oh, great man. things about them. And what's the the third one is uh, at World's End or whatever? At World's End, uh, yeah, I believe it's at World's End. This is the, something like that. Um, I think, uh, Tolga said something. This is the end. Well, this is the end. I think is the one that was with uh, like Seth Rogen. Oh, I love that Seth Rogen movie. Those those two came out around the same time, so I always get them confused. Sorry, I'm looking on my shelf to see the World's End at World's yeah. End. Wars, yeah, so. Of the three Cornetto trilogy films, I think Hot Fuzz is the funniest. Um, uh, Shaun of the Dead is probably the most brilliant simply because it satirizes zombie films so well. But to me, the most personal one was um, At World's End simply because it handles a lot of... It, it balances out the comedy with sci-fi elements and it really handles a lot of... Much, it's his most mature film for me as far as like what the themes he's dealing with. And the ending just hit home so personally for me. So is that a movie I need to add to my list? Uh, At World's End? Yeah. Yeah. You just watch everything that he did. Yeah. I would, I would even say just watch yeah, all three of the Cornetto trilogy especially. I think World's End is the only one I actually own on, on Blu-ray. Because I, I, I remember now that I had Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead on DVD. And then I got rid of all my DVDs and I never repurchased them. Which is a shame because I really want to rewatch. Uh, I mean, all of them really, but Shaun of the Dead particularly. How did you feel about the World's End? I know a lot of people were mixed on it. I absolutely loved it. I enjoyed it, but I I'm gonna have to admit I like I've not watched it since it was in theaters. Yeah. Um. So I don't remember a lot of it, but it did have all of the same, uh, like clever notes and stuff that he has in those other two movies. Um. That. It, it was what I wanted, you know, it gave me everything that I wanted, just one more piece of that to, to kind of wrap it up. But um, I would definitely recommend Jess, like if you do plan on watching those, like watch all three of them in the order they came out, because there's a lot of like uh, thematic elements that continue between them. Um, and it, it I, I think it's more rewarding. So if you go from Shaun of the Dead to Hot Fuzz to World's End, you're, yeah, you're seeing the director really come into his own throughout the course of that. And he's the same guy that did Scott Pilgrim? And yes. Baby Driver. And Baby Driver, wow. But like Scott Pilgrim and Baby Driver bear zero resemblance to any of these, in my opinion. Okay, so what do I watch first? Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're short films. They're only like an hour and a half. Hot Fuzz next? Yes. Hot Fuzz and World's End third. Okay. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead is is parodying zombie films. Hot Fuzz is parodying basically all the great action films that you know, and it's hilarious. And um, World's yeah, End is uh, Timothy Dalton in yeah. yeah. World's End is a a body snatcher film. Oh, mm -hmm. body snatcher film, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. More or less, you got to see it. But it's under the guise of like, because I think in the in the trailers, I don't know how much they they give you. But it's just like a bunch of guys who are going through their pub crawl. Yeah. And then things start happening. Huh. Okay. All right. Yeah, and Attack the Block is awesome. Everybody's Attack mentioning Attack the Block. Yeah, Attack the Block is great. I think he didn't he produce that one. Uh la, 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 la. I don't I know. I think he did. He produced that one. That's that was, I think, John Boyega's Nick Frost movie. Was in it for a little bit. Yeah, I know nope. I have that one somewhere. Where's the view? Yeah. All right. Let's see. Yeah, from the producers of Shaun of the Dead, Attack the Block. 
yeah, this one I really loved Attack the Block. I love the alien, like the appearance of the aliens in this one, but just the idea of just a bunch of uh, teenagers who are just trying to protect their neighborhood essentially is the entire plot um, from the alien invaders. There, yeah, there's aliens in it. Um, oh, okay, wait, I want to see that. <laughs> Why? Anything with aliens, I'm into. Attack. Attack the block. Yeah, Attack the Block is basically, it tells the story of these kids that live uh, in, is it Britain? Um, and they're, uh, they live inside of this building, and what ends up happening is that this alien crashes onto, uh, near their building, and it's hunting them, and they have to fight it back. Oh, that sounds so, that sounds so good. Yeah, it's real. Attack the block is great. All right. Well, I got to peace out. Yeah, I got to get going soon. Okay. Well, let me give the uh, In Stock Trades uh, plug and ask where you guys uh, are. Uh, InStockTrades.com is our sponsor. They are fabulous. They will give you up to 50% off on your books, your collected editions at 2%. Loyalty discount applies if you uh, do it right. Uh, they give you a $50 gift card at the end of every month. Joey Goose won last month. You, too, could be a lucky winner uh, of IST's generosity. $50 or more in an order in the United States gets you free shipping. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's in StockTrades.com. Lou, where can they find you? Comic Dad 101 for my old uh, in my old archive of videos on YouTube and Comic Dad 101 on Twitter. A, an omnibus collector. Where are they find me at the omnibus collector on YouTube? I just put up a new video yesterday where I recommended some single volume manga. Uh, so instead of recommending series that are 100 volumes long and that we're going to take ten thousand dollars to collect. <laughs> made it a little bit easier on y'all and give you some things that will be one volume and, you know, 15 bucks or something. Um, but I wanted to mention my previous video uh, where I talk about the comics that I'd recommend to read before watching Falcon and Winter Soldier when it comes Ooh. out next Friday. You have the chance in that video to win this book. This is the first complete collection of Captain America, Sam Wilson. Watch that video. Um, and you can uh, see how to win that. So I just want to put that out there because tomorrow is the last day at the end of the day tomorrow, I'm cutting it off. Uh, any additional comments after that point are not, not included in the contest. And then Saturday, I think is what I said, I will be uh, choosing the winner using a random system to, to draw. Is that Sam Wilson book, a hardcover or paperback? Just a, just a paperback. Just one of them. The oh, it's, but it's pretty big. What, what's it called? This is the uh, Captain America Sam Wilson Complete Collection Volume 1. This is the first of two volumes. The second one came out just uh, a couple weeks ago. Who wrote that? Uh, this has some material by Rick Remender, and uh, and then it goes into Nick Spencer's material. It sounds interesting. I may get that. Uh, and my name's Omnidog. You can find me at Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidog's underscore vault. And for Gio, who couldn't make it back, you find him on A Week in Geekdom on YouTube. So thank you to the chat. You've been great tonight. Thank you to my co-hosts. Thank you to InStockTrades.com. And thank you to uh, those of you who are viewing this afterwards. Peace and love. Peace and love. Not everybody.